1. Install and configure the primary DNS zone server. Alright, let's do another implementation of uh, DNS, and we'll do a standard primary and secondary zone. So I'm going to create a new zone, and the first thing I'm going to do is a primary. Primary is a read-write copy. And this would also be backwards compatible with like Bind and Linux and Unix DNS. Um, notice I don't have the Active Directory Integrated option here because I haven't done DC Promo. In this case, this is just a standalone server. Um, it's not part of a domain structure. It's, it's not a domain controller per se. Um, but we'll look at that in just a moment. So standard primary zone, I want to select that option, primary zone, the zone name, and um, I'm going to call, I'm going to call my domain battlestars.galaxy. Okay, and this will be the, in this case, my file here, my DNS file. And, um, I can choose several options here. Allow only secure dynamic, dynamic updates. Now that's only available if I had Active Directory set up. Okay, so I have to have an ADI zone and I have to do DC promo. And that is a neat feature in the way that DNS works with DHCP, and we'll take a look at that as well in a moment. But my only two options here are allow both non-secure and secure, or do not allow dynamic updates. I can do either one. Um, notice the you know the caveat here, you know, or the cautionary. Uh, warning, this option is significant security vulnerability because updates can be accepted from untrusted sources. And um, We'll talk about that, like I said, when we get to, when we get to Active Directory Integrated and we're looking at the you know, secure dynamic update and how it works with DHCP. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go with the default. And, you know, I could, if I were in a mixed mode environment with like Linux running bind and I wanted to use some Active Directory DNS as well, I could choose this option. Which would give me the ability to do secure, you know, secure dynamic updates and non-secure. Um, either way, but okay. So I'm going to click on finish, and when I do that, notice here's here's my new zone here. Okay, so I have a name server zone. It's you know for Galactica and Galactic Hostmaster, and then what I would need to do is I would have, actually have to go in and add a DNS suffix since this is not an Active Directory setup and I haven't set it up. I'm, you know, I would have to go in and conf configure client settings. And were I to do that, I would go here and here, 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 here. Let me go to IP version. I'm not using IP version 6. Advanced DNS and DNS suffix for this connection. And I'd, you know, I'd want to add my zone information in. So in this case, you know, battlestars.galaxy. And let me see what I do. Let's try to be consistent here. What was capital B, capital S? Capital B, capital S. Okay. All right. I'm going to add that. Just configure that information in along with my static IP there if I want. Okay. And let's make some records. And there's several different kinds of records we could make. Um, in a forward lookup zone, you map host names to IP addresses, and so the kinds of records you would place there would be A records, if it's IP version 4, or quadruple A records if you do an IP version 6. We're doing IP version 4, because it's a whole lot easier. Um, only a 32-bit instead of 128-bit um, values there. Um, and I'm just going to call this, um, I'll say Raptor 1, and I'll make something up. Um, don't think I have anything on my network with that IP, but we'll just throw that in. And Raptor 2 and add that one in. And let me add uh, Viper 5. We'll add that one in. Let's see what we have. 10, 11, and then 12 there. Notice the option here too. I could I could create an associated pointer record. Well, remember from what we've talked about in the past with Linux and Microsoft, the reverse lookup zone is the opposite of a forward lookup. The forward lookup maps a host name to an IP. Reverse maps an IP to a host name. And while this holds A records, this would hold pointer records. And there's other kinds of records I can store here as well. An alias, a canonical name. And actually, let me add a record for um, the server itself. Uh, um, and let me see. I can't remember the address I gave it. 
<laughs> yeah, short term memory is pretty much gone there, guys. 150. All right, 1927, 13, 150. So let me add that in. Alright, 150. I'm going to add that host and that'll be a Galactica. Alright, so I've added some records there and if I wanted to I could also add an alias or the C name, canonical name record. So if I wanted to do that um, um I do best battle start ever and then if I wanted to browse for the FQDN I can go here to my forward lookup zone, to my zone here, and I can select this A record. All right, and this notice that this alias just maps to an A record. And there's several other records I could add in there. Notice I have a name server record in here in the start of authority. I'm authoritative for this end. So I have all this information set up in my zone now. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and close that. And this, this is the primary zone. Um, so I'm going to just kind of test that out a little bit. Let me open up a command prompt and and let me go ahead and flush my resolver cache. Okay. So empty cache. Let's see what's there now. Not much. And let's ping. All right, so I'm pinging Galactica there. And if I were to look at my resolver cache, you know, slowly add some information in there from my DNS server. All right, and let's ping, let's see, let's, won't be able to find any of these guys. Well, let's, let's try our alias there. The other guys don't exist. I just kind of pick those IPs as an example at random, but Okay, and then so there's my alias. It's mapped to that. And then if these guys actually existed on my network, you know, again, I, I'd be able to ping them. So my DNS server is set up and it's serving everything out, but I only have one. It's a you know primary. And the way this works, you know, being a primary zone, I can add and delete and modify records here. I have permission to do that. But remember that the secondary zone that we're going to set up is it's read only. Also, the other thing I need to do is I need to determine who has permission to get what's called a, a zone transfer? Um, and by default, it'll say only servers listed in the name servers tab, and you should add, go ahead and add the servers here. I've had issues, and you can check this option to any server, um, but unless I put the IP in the name servers tab or I specify it here, I've had issues with it, you know, not completing a zone transfer to a secondary zone. So I wouldn't choose this option. Not to mention, it's just really not safe. Um, and you know you definitely don't want to uncheck that. I mean, I guess if you were super paranoid and all you wanted was a primary zone, you could uncheck that. But you know you want. So what you really want to do is this. And it so happens that I have another server. Of course, it's called the Pegasus. <laughs> if you're a BSG fan. Um, but I want to make it my secondary zone. So I'm going to do that, and I just need to specify the IP address um, of the server. So I'm going to do that, and the the name server. Um, We'll have to come back and add it in here. So let's hop over there and let's configure that what we're going to use is our secondary DNS server um, with a static IP address. We need to install the DNS server role and then we'll be ready to set it up as our secondary zone. Two, install and configure the secondary DNS zone server. So now I'm on my uh, second 2008 server. Of course, it's called the Pegasus. And I want to configure a secondary DNS server. The first thing I need to do. Um, you know, in the standard model, again, there's no active directory. I'm, you know, it's just a standard primary and secondary zone. But I want to right click on network and select properties. And I want, I want you know, something I want to configure a static IP. We don't want vital network services on dynamic IPs that can change. And, you know, we need to make sure that they have static stationary IPs and that they're always easy to find by workstations and servers that need their services. So 109, 207, and 13. And my last IP for the primary was 150, so I'm going to make this one 151. You know, be careful. There's no IP conflicts. I, I know, you know, with my DHCP range, there's nothing past 100 on my network, so I'm good. But the default gateway to a 7.13.1, that's my router. 
And then I can use the loop back again here, 127001, and alternate DNS server. Um, I can use the primary, 199.207.13.150 as my primary DNS server. So that would be my static settings on my secondary, or what I'm going to configure or set up to be my secondary DNS server. Okay, and again, I just want to go ahead and install the DNS server role. As soon as my really slow server catches up here, still collecting data. When it's done, I'll be able to add the role. So I'm going to select the DNS server role. Okay. Now I can add the role. I'm going to select server roles. Same thing, I'm going to check DNS server, next, and next, and install. Okay, and the DNS server has been installed successfully on our, our what's well, going to become our secondary server. And again, I'm just going to make a little shortcut. It'll add the, you know, the management console and, and snap into your administrative tools menu. So I'm going to just Put a shortcut to that on my desktop. Let me open up my DNS and I want to configure a new zone. Again, it's going to be forward lookup. And here, um, this time I want to create a secondary zone. And to do that, I have to specify the name of the primary. And let's continue to specify the master DNS server, the primary. So I can just add the IP address. Um, and I know it's 199.207.13.150. Okay. And click Next. And click Finish. Okay, now I'm not done yet. Um, if I tried to do a zone transfer now, I would, you know, it's going to say zone not loaded by DNS server. I, the reason is I don't have permission. So even though I have the, you know, I'm almost done with the secondary, but I'm going to have to go back to the primary and give it the IP address, specify the name servers that are allowed to receive a zone transfer. And the reason for this is, think about it, if anybody could get a zone transfer, they could use just use a tool like NSLOOKUP or any other thing and get a whole list of host names and aliases and server records and things um, for workstations and servers on your network. So that would be a really tremendous, you know, bad security risk there. So we'll have to go on the primary server and configure for under zone transfers and name servers who has permission to receive a zone transfer. And once we do that, once we add the IP address for our secondary server, we'll come back here and we should be able to right click and say transfer for master and implement a zone transfer. So let's go back and do that. Three, configure the DNS suffix settings on servers and clients if necessary. Note, this is not required with Active Directory integrated DNS zones. Now I want to add my DNS suffix. Um, so I'm going to right click network properties and manage network connections, properties, IP version 4, advanced, let me go to DNS, and let me just add the DNS suffix here. And it was um, battlestars.galaxy. All right, so let's add the DNS suffix there. And now let's hop on over to the primary server. Next, we need to go back to the primary DNS server and create an A record, a glue record, or name server record, and add the IP of the secondary DNS server to the DNS database. Okay, we're back on our primary DNS server, uh, the Galactica. 
And now that we've installed the DNS server role in our secondary DNS server, the Pegasus, we need to add an A record to map the hostname to an IP, and we need to add it to the name servers tab to give it permission to you know, request zone transfers. So to do that, I'm going to go here. Four. First, we'll add an A record on the primary DNS server for the hostname and IP of the secondary server. And remember, you know, the, the primary is the only one where we can actually add or modify or delete A records. Now that I've given it a static IP, 199.207.13.151, and that would map to Pegasus. And I might just test that, you know. Um, if I were to go here, I can reach it by hostname. Okay, and everything's fine. I get four echo replies. I can reach it by hostname. On the primary DNS server, add the IPs of any secondary DNS servers to the name servers tab. Also, configure the primary server to allow zone transfers to those servers. This process creates a glue record, also known as a name server record, for the secondary DNS server on the primary server. Now, what I need to do is create a glue record. Um, and go over and add it to the name servers tab. Okay, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on name servers. And notice by default here under zone transfers, it's only servers listed on the name servers tab. You could alternatively, you know, supply the IP address here. You could just add it in. Um, but I'm going to go with the default option. This option, again, not only is it not secure, it doesn't really work right. I've noticed with standard primary and secondary zones. But I want to make sure the IP is here under the name servers tab. Notice that, you know, in this case, Galactic is there. And if it's not there, you can just edit and add it in, add the FQD in. Um, that's, that's the primary zone. That's the server I'm on now, but I want to add the Pegasus. And it'll probably tell me, it might tell me, hey, that's, you know, this particular server is not authoritative or, um, but that's okay because it's, it's a secondary zone. Let's see if I can resolve it there. Found at 199.207.13.151. Um, and notice it told me this server with this IP address is not authoritative for the required zone. That's all right because we've got the you know the primary server is authoritative for resolving host names for that zone. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now with that set up, um, notice it added a glue record. So here's a name server record for Pegasus.BattleStars.Galaxy, and then there's the A record for Pegasus. So now let's go back to the secondary. 6. Now go back to the secondary DNS server and test your configuration for a successful zone transfer from the master. Okay, and now we're back on the Pegasus. And I'm going to reopen uh, the DNS management console. Go to forward lookup zones, and here's our zone here. And notice now we have all the records. All right, there, there's been a zone transfer that was initiated automatically because now it has permission to request a zone transfer from the primary zone. And again, notice, unlike the primary, I, don't ha I can't modify, add, delete records here. It's just a read-only copy as a secondary zone. But I can do that on the primary, and then I can have several secondary DNS servers and initiate zone transfers this way. And you can do a full zone transfer or incremental zone transfer, and there's several different ways that you can implement that.